friends, welcome to another episode of Making Disciples. My name is Chris and I am your host. It's lovely to have this time with you today. I hope you're doing all right. I hope that you are enjoying uh, the month of May. If you're listening to this in real time, if you listen to this out of order, I have not I can't help you with that. I don't know what the weather's going to be like. But I hope you're doing all right and uh, that life is treating you well. It's been really good over the last few months to be answering different discipleship questions that you guys have sent in. Now, this isn't a question that's been sent in, but it is a question that I've had uh, from a friend of mine recently. And uh, it's a, I think it's a really interesting one and a, and a helpful one for many of us because uh, I think we do struggle uh, to know what to say or what to think around this particular topic. So let me just kind of let you in on it. It says in Matthew 22, uh, that we to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And that's one of those Bible passages that uh, is like the central piece of discipleship, loving God with your head, your hands, and your heart. And that's the theme throughout a lot of these Making Disciples episodes is loving God with our heads, hands, heart. And uh, not only loving, but as the great commandment says, to uh, teach people to obey his teaching. So loving and obeying God with your head, how you think, your heart, what's going on internally. Uh, You often talk about it in terms of your soul, in terms of your heart, and then your hands, your strength, you know, what you do with what you've got. And then after that, Jesus says these words. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. This is the greatest commandment. Then he says, and the second is this, love your neighbor, love your neighbor, and then it says, as yourself. So love your neighbor as yourself. And I think what we end up doing here is, you know, we love God with our head, hands, and heart. And then we've got this follow-up, you know, love your neighbor. And we talk a lot about love thy neighbor. And uh, the number of, you know, you Google it, love thy neighbor, you'll find a, you know, a photograph of a guy uh, with a baseball cap on it says on the baseball cap love thy neighbor and that picture gets used all over the place if i've seen one sermon with that picture in i've seen a million sermons with that picture in a uh, picture of a guy with his head dipped down and on the cap it says love thy neighbor and we talk a lot about love thy neighbor love thy neighbor it's, it's important that we show christ's love to the world through the way that we then choose to love our neighbors those that are around us what we fail to do is explore the second part of that line so love your neighbor and then it says, as yourself, as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commands, loving God with your head, your hands, and your heart, and then loving your neighbor as yourself. And that's what I want to explore today, loving ourselves. So we're called to love our neighbor as ourselves. I hope that many of us do not love our neighbors as we love ourselves, because actually many of us really struggle to love ourselves. And because we can't love ourselves, if we were to treat our neighbours in the same way we treat ourselves, we would be, you know, it'd be a poor practice. People would not experience uh, a positive thing. You know, many of us do struggle loving ourselves. You look in the mirror, uh, it's very likely that what you look, what you see and what's looking back at you is not something that you love or even appreciate. Uh, Many of us, we really detest the way that we behave. We hate the way that we sometimes think, the way that we sometimes act. We feel like our foot is always in our mouths. And uh, and we really don't love ourselves. In fact, many of us, we actually almost, you could say, we hate ourselves. We really detest ourselves. And and that's what I want to explore today. And I was having this conversation with a friend about this loving your neighbour. And, you know, my friend just said, the thing is, Chris, if I loved my neighbour the way that I love myself, my, my neighbour would become my enemy. My neighbour would become my enemy. And I think that's so true. How many of us have almost become enemies of ourselves? We we just don't like what we see. And therefore, if we were to love others like we love ourselves, we're going to have a real problem. So in today's episode, that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at uh, loving yourself. Because if we don't love ourselves, then we are never going to be able to love others the way that Christ wants us to love. So that's what we are going to talk about today, how to love ourselves. So uh, we're going to jump in pretty fast. Just a, a word uh, for the coming weeks. Next few weeks, I've got some great interviews. I am really excited. I've got an interview coming up uh, with a guy called Matt Britton, 
who performs the gospel of Mark in prisons and in pubs and in places. And he's going to help us explore the gospel of Mark from the position of, of, of a performance. Uh, and he has some great stuff to say about that. We've got an interview coming up with Jim Warner Wallace, who is a cold case detective. He's been on the podcast before, and he is a total legend. And uh, he's given us some uh, more of his time to talk a little bit about um, uh, Christianity and how we can be convinced by it and the facts. So that's really exciting as well. Plus interviews with with other church leaders and other thinkers. So great weeks coming up. Now. Today we are talking about loving ourselves, so let's jump in with the jingle and get on with the teaching. So let's go for it. How to love ourselves. So let's talk about loving ourselves because the truth of it is many of us do not do that. We don't love ourselves. We tolerate uh, and by tolerating ourselves, we are um, not looking after ourselves maybe as well as we might look after others. Some of us are much better at loving our neighbour than we are loving ourselves. And uh, you know, I find it very interesting that Jesus says, love your neighbour as yourself. And there's an element here where uh, some people really love themselves and, and therefore you can see why they need to love somebody else because they're so caught up with themselves. Whereas I say many of us, we really aren't caught up with ourselves. We're much better at serving others than we are serving ourselves. So let's just jump into a couple of passages. So we've had the Matthew 22, you know, love your neighbour as yourself. But Psalm 139 says this, For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Do you know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made? And what a great set of beautiful poetic words. We go, mm, yes, I love those words. But do you know those words? Do you know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made? We are so caught up in culture about looks, aren't we? We are so caught up about weight, so caught up about looks, uh, trying to put our best foot forward, trying to present ourselves in the best possible way way and uh, you know people will spend a heck of a lot of money on clothing heck of a lot of money uh, on uh, things that help perf- their performance or the way that they their external beauty might look people spend a lot of money on that stuff friends you are fearfully and wonderfully made and I do not think the fearfully and the wonderfully are about your external beauty your body the way that it works the way that it functions the way that you navigate the world the way that you can think the way you can speak you can reflect all of that is because you're fearfully and wonderfully made it's not about the, your your external beauty at all it's about the amazingness that you are a creation of God and that you uh, shine God's glory because you're made in his image and that image doesn't necessarily mean the way that you look like him but there's something about your nature and your character your being that is the similarity the image of of God so you're fearfully and wonderfully made your body is amazing Uh, the fact that you've got life and you breathe is amazing Uh, 1 Peter 3 says this your beauty shall not come from outward adornment such as elaborate hairstyles the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes rather it should be that of your inner self the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is of great worth in God's sight what 1 Peter 3 there's such amazing teaching in Peter's um, epistles that 1 Peter and 2 Peter don't get much screen time I mean Paul bless him he seems to uh, get a lot of the the, the time uh, St Paul but St Peter the disciple Peter says some incredible things and I just said what an amazing few verses your I mean this is like Peter speaking into our culture right now I mean this is exactly in a culture that is all about the outward adornment the elaborate hairstyles the jewelry and the fine clothes sporting ability and all of that he says into that your beauty should not come from outward adornment such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes rather it should be that of your inner self the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is of great worth in God's sight what God loves and 
and says is beautiful is not because of how you dress, how you primp yourself, uh, the way that you prune yourself and the way that you present yourself. This is not what determines how God sees your beauty. The beauty that you have does not come from the fine clothes or the jewelry that you wear. Rather, as Peter puts it, it's because of the beauty of your inner self. That is the place of beauty. So if you think about loving yourself, what we talked about so far, you are fearfully and wonderfully made, not because of how you look, because of the fact that you are just flipping awesome. And secondly, your beauty does not come from externals. It, I don't care what you look like. I don't care what you see when you look in the mirror. When God looks at you, he's not looking at outward beauty. He's looking for an inward beauty. And so what God sees in you should be interesting to you. You know, loving yourself, not because of what you look like externally, but loving yourself because of who you are internally. You know, what is it here? The passage says that God sees as beautiful, gentle and quiet spirit. Not being somebody that's noisy and brash, but somebody who is gentle in their spirit. So let's just you know think about this. God is not interested in your externals. He's interested in your internals. What is beautiful to God is not necessarily what's beautiful to us. We're looking on the external stuff. He's looking on the internal stuff. So let's shift our perspective of love for, for a second to love ourselves the way that God loves us. Let me just read this. A little paragraph here. Self-love allows us to accept God's love for us. 1 John 4, 19. Self-love allows us to accept God's love for us. The Bible says that we love because God first loved us. We can love because he's loved us. Hating ourselves makes it difficult to receive and experience the depths of God's unconditional love. When we love ourselves, despite our flaws, we can more fully embrace how fully God cherishes us. I think this is really important. I think by the way that we neglect to love ourselves, some of us are missing out on God's love for us. It's like because we can't love ourselves, we are incapable of receiving the love that God has for us. And one of the ways that we receive God's love is starting to be able to love ourselves. We can then receive what he says. And I would recognize there's something here. As I appreciated that I was a child of God, that I was loved by God, and, and I allowed that to kind of marinate. And then as I started to love myself more, as I started to love myself more, and loving ourselves more, that's really hard for it. I, I, I'd often say, I don't love myself, but you know, I, I, cherishing who I am because of God. The more that I've been able to do that, the more I've been able to receive the love that God has for me. And it's like, as, as, as the door opens a bit, as I appreciate who I am in Christ and what he's made me to be, and I, I love who God's made me to be, in that the door opens a little bit more and I can receive more of the Holy Spirit and more of God's love. So it's like the more I open the door by loving myself, the more the door is open to receive the love of God. And some of us, we are, the door is so tightly shut, we hate ourselves, that it's, it's so hard then for the Spirit of God to, to reveal his love to us. Now, of course, a supernatural move of God can swing that door wide open and changes how we see ourselves, therefore we change very often my experience has been the more I've loved myself the more I've experienced the love of God uh, and to say those words to love myself I find really difficult because I want to be able to say something softer than that which would be to cherish myself or to care for myself more means I'll be able to receive more of God's love because I, you know it's hard to even use those words towards ourselves you know I'm brought up in a culture that says you don't love yourself don't be prideful you know it's uh, humility and gentleness uh, are what it's about so don't love yourself Oh, no, actually, to receive the love of God, it also means receiving love from ourselves. So self-love allows us to accept God's love for us. Uh, the Bible says, as we love, uh, the Bible says, as we love, because God first loved us, hating ourselves makes it difficult to receive and experience the depths of God's unconditional love. When we love ourselves, despite our flaws, we are more fully, we fully embrace how fully God cherishes us. So knowing God's love for us means that we can love ourselves more, but also as we love ourselves more, the more we can 
cherish the love that God has for us. Uh, so there's something in all of this about as we love ourselves, God loves us, as God loves us, we can love ourselves. And it's somewhere in that paradox of the two that we, we find that, that we can really love ourselves. So let me become very practical here for a second, or for the rest of this episode, I, I should say. Here are some short thoughts on how to love yourself, because many of us really struggle with it. I want to make this really, really practical for us. Okay, what about this one? So how to love ourselves. What about doing it through um, practicing self-compassion? Uh, being forgiving of yourself, being compassionate to yourself. Um, choosing in the moments when you could be hard on yourself to choose to be compassionate to yourself. So in those moments when you know you've stuffed up, you, you've said the wrong thing you've acted in a way that's stupid oh, why have I done that rather than turning on, on yourself and loathing yourself practice self compassion you know that if somebody said something stupid and you were talking you'd say don't worry about it we all make those mistakes you know yes you might want to go sorry say sorry to that person or it may be not that big a deal but you just feel foolish you know there are times when I have said something the person I've said it to you know, they're not interested in what I've just said, but I just feel foolish. I feel like I've said the stupid thing. I've, I've really been a fool of myself. And in those moments, to practice self-compassion, how would I tell someone else to feel about this situation that I'm now in? Well, I would tell them to be gentle on themselves, and I'd tell them to practice compassion. Be compassionate to yourself. You know, Give yourself a bit of space. Uh, we, all, we all do that. So practicing self-compassion. The next way of practicing self-love, I would say, can you um, appreciate your positive qualities? Maybe make yourself a cup of tea, and rather than turning on your mobile phone or turning on the TV, just allow yourself to sit there, maybe with a notepad, and ask yourself this question, what are my positive qualities that that make me me what are my positive qualities and these positive qualities spend just a bit of time appreciating them so I am dyslexic I've mentioned this before in the podcast uh, I mention it you know quite often at times because I think it helps liberate others when they see somebody else is dyslexic I for a long time struggled I felt I felt there was something wrong with me because of this this thing this dyslexia and what what I've ended up doing over the last 20 years is coming to appreciate things that sometimes I've seen as negatives in my life. Uh, so rather than seeing dyslexia as a negative quality, I've actually come to appreciate it as a positive quality because I am dyslexic. There are certain things about me that are just different to others. I think differently, I see differently, I can navigate things around me differently. I'm very, I'm a visual person, I see stuff. And we were only at um, dinner. Uh, last night we were talking to a friend of ours who does not, in her mind, visualise things. And if I said, you know, to her, talking about trees, you know, say think of a tree, she can't think of a tree. But if I said to her, uh, think of the sound of wind, she she can do that. Her, her, she's an auditory thinker, so she thinks. So she words, uh, she remembers words that are spoken to her, not pictures. But I've, I've read it. I can't. This is a different ball game for me. So I see things. She hears things. Uh, she hears music. Uh, she hears what is said repeated to her. That is a superpower. Now for me, my dyslexia becomes a superpower because of the way that my brain works. It means that there's a quality there that others, you know, I can navigate things. I can visualize things differently. Uh, so actually choosing to not see the negatives, but appreciating the positive dynamics or angles on the things. Uh, so, you know, some of, of the my positive uh, qualities, you know, I am a creative, I am a, an imaginative, I can problem solve. Uh, I can get on and get, I can do projects that, um, I can see projects through to the end. You know, I can start something, even though it's not going to be perfect when I start, I can start something because I'll work it through to the end. I'm a, I'm a complete finisher. These are all, you know, positive things. And I've had to spend time appreciating myself because I can look at what everybody else is capable of and I go, why, why am I so rubbish compared to them? But I've I've spent time appreciating my positive qualities 
and owning them. If you're listening to this and you're in England, this sounds quite alien to us. If you're listening to this in the US, you're like, yeah, that's what you do. My American friends are really good at this. They're great at saying, I'm great at this. I don't know how culturally we've just been brought up differently. Uh, But, you know, English friends, we struggle with this. So spending some time to appreciate your positive qualities is a really important way of loving yourself. What about challenging negative self-talk? When you find yourself speaking poorly of yourself, why not catch yourself and challenge yourself to not do that? I'll give you an example. So I often think that if I say something, my view is not important. I often think that my view is not interesting and that people will reject my view. And what I've realized is one of the ways that I do that, I talk about the royal we. We have done this. Like, I caught myself recently with um, the uh, course I've been doing recently and I've often found myself talking about what we found in my research. What we found. There is no we. That research was my research. And... I've really struggled to put my name to that research because I find that really alien. And I end up uh, uh, discrediting myself by saying, we have found out that in the research that I've conducted, and it's all messed up. It's my research. I've spent hours on this. Nobody else has done this. So I end up using phrases that discredit myself from the authority that, that that research has. And I do this all the time where I where I speak negative phrases about myself. And we've got to catch that, haven't we? And we have to challenge ourselves not to speak negatively of ourselves. Let's keep going. So we've talked about practicing self-compassion, appreciating your positive uh, qualities, challenging negative self-talk. A couple of other ways to love yourself. Love yourself by doing things you enjoy. Some of us think that we don't deserve good things and that we should always do what others want because they're more valuable people than we are. Friends, to love yourself, do something that you enjoy. Show yourself you're valuable and important. Valuable and important. Do something that brings you joy. That may be through a hobby, or it might just be something you do on your own, going to see something that you enjoy experience something that you enjoy uh, because in that you actually tell yourself you're valuable and that 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 time for yourself is valuable so do things that you enjoy Uh, i'd also say this another way of loving yourself is taking care of your body Uh, i'm not so good at this i definitely don't do uh, exercise i don't like to keep fit running is not something i enjoy i love walking uh, that that brings me joy, but actually sports doesn't bring me much joy, which means that I tend to neglect my body. I don't I don't do things that energizes my physical body. Um, I'm an artist. Give me a paintbrush and I'll paint. You know, give me something to make and I'll make it. But this idea of using my body in a sporting way, I just it's totally alien to me. One of one of the ways that you can love yourself is taking care of your physical self, your body. Um, if you look after yourself poorly, friends then you are going to live a shorter life. That's kind of how it works. So take care of yourself. Take care of the body that God has given you because it's fearfully and wonderfully made. The other area I would say about loving yourself is this, learning to forgive yourself. And this is similar to this practice in compassion, but learning to forgive. The number of times I've said something or done something that I can't believe I'd be like, why have I said that? You stupid idiot. Like, why did you let that leak out? You know, you, my extrovertedness means sometimes I talk talk too much and I hang myself. And, you know, have you been in that situation where you've been talking to an introvert and they just sit there silent and you end up talking, 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 talking. You think, why? Please just say something because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something I don't want. The next thing you know, you've said something you don't want. You think, oh, gosh, why would I do that? Um, it just, like garbage comes out of my mouth sometimes just to fill a conversation because the other person doesn't say anything and then I'm like oh gosh and then I end up with this hangover this like emotional hangover like, oh I can't believe I said that what a stupid thing to say friends learn to forgive yourself learn to give yourself grace 
allow to give yourself forgiveness allow yourself to be set free from those things rather than stewing on them for hours and on end, on end with that that emotional hangover where you just think oh we're an idiot forgive yourself like you might forgive somebody else next i would say this one way of loving yourself is using positive affirmations if you're english this is super difficult we are not good at affirming ourselves publicly we really struggle to speak well of ourselves well one way of loving yourself is choosing to speak positively and affirm the positives of you and your character choosing to speak of yourself in such a way that is kind to yourself so using positive affirmations so for a long time i would have really struggled to say on this podcast uh, that uh, dyslexia is my superpower just one example because for me that has been such a negative thing um, you know really caused me so, so much struggle in life to actually turn it into a positive affirmation of myself and my character that actually one of the reasons I think that I'm able to explore the Bible and teach it uh, in a more creative manner is because of my dyslexia. So choosing to speak positively and affirm the positives in myself, that's, I find that really hard to do. But by speaking well of yourself, you are learning to love yourself. Um, when you speak ill of yourself, all you're doing is caught, it's like self harm. Uh, it's emotional, verbal self harm when you speak uh, poorly of yourself. So, positive and affirming words about yourself. The final one way of get of help helping to love yourself would be this: to consider counselling if needed. It may well be that you need to spend some time with somebody who can speak into your life and maybe a bit of CBT. Uh, maybe some therapy, uh, maybe having a counsellor ask questions and get to the bottom of why do we end up behaving that way. I think so many of us in the UK, uh, we we don't put ourselves forward, we don't speak well about ourselves because we've grown up in a culture and a school system that has hard drilled into us, don't be the mouthy one, don't be the gobby one, don't speak up, keep your head down, be humble. Uh, nobody likes to show off. You know that's a phrase, isn't it? Nobody likes to show off, and therefore we've we've formed ourselves around this way of thinking, where we end up we don't want to show off because that's uh, people will not like you if you show off. Therefore, we end up uh, doing the complete opposite and going in ourse ourselves and actually hating ourselves rather than showing off ourselves. We do the opposite. We end up hating ourselves. So, friends, considering some counselling to have a counsellor speak into. Where's that come from? Is it to do with childhood? Is it to do with your parents? Is it to do with a friend? Is there some way that you've been spoken? Your life's been spoken into in such a way that's actually caused you harm. So, consider getting yourself some counselling. Friends, Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. Learning to love yourself is a part of the commandment, this great commandment. Loving your neighbor as you love yourself. Loving yourself is a part of God's command for you. Not love your neighbor and hate yourself, but love yourself and from loving yourself, loving others. Knowing God has love, knowing the love that God has for you, allowing that to change how you love yourself, and now love others that in that way, uh, loved by God, and you love yourself because of what He's done for you. Therefore, we choose to love others, and I think that is a really difficult but important piece of our discipleship. And it's not something we need to just know in our heads; it is something we also need to know in our hearts, in our heart of hearts loving ourselves for the best qualities putting our best foot forward and then loving ourselves with our hands by practically putting things in place that are going to love us doing the things that we enjoy taking care of our bodies uh, going places and acting out in such a way that we can be proud of ourselves so loving god with your head your hands and your heart i would say friends we also need to love ourselves with our heads our hands and our hearts loving ourselves in our head so we're not constantly stewing on things loving ourselves in our hearts so we don't see ourselves in a bitter way but in a in a hopeful joyful 
caring way and loving ourselves with our hands by tangibly putting things in place that we can enjoy and appreciate ourselves. So there you go, friends. Loving God with your head, your hands and your heart and maybe loving yourself with your head, your hands and your heart because if you don't love yourself then you can't love your neighbour the way that God wants you to love your neighbour. Friends, until next time, grace and peace. Do give me your thoughts in the comments. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on uh, what we talked about today. Have you got a way of loving yourself that I've not mentioned? I would love to hear it. So friends, until next time, grace and peace and have a great week. Thank you.